I'm John Bowden. It's part one of our second interview with David Page. Keep in mind, during this whole series, it's a long one. We'll be featuring snippets, just a few here and there, of our first interview, where we talk about his debut EP, Forgotten Toys, and the individual tracks. Now, the big news that Luke, Steve Lukather, has already said that there will be no more new Toto music, at least in the foreseeable future. We talked to David Page about that and what his Christmas traditions are and what he's doing for Christmas this year. By the way, uh, Steve had said, Luke said in an interview, so I didn't see it, but that that any new music coming out will not be Toto music. It'll just be solo music. Yeah, for right now, yeah, we're kind of at a, on a hiatus from Toto music. We're doing because everybody's just involved in their own thing, you know. Uh, Steve Steve was doing a solo record. Then Luke Joe started doing one at the same time, and then they called me and said, "You got to do one. You got to do the solo record here." So I said, "Go, go, gee, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't. I'm not really a, a solo artist here." And they said, well, "Yes, you are. You can do this." So I put one out too, you know. And uh, 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 we just thought by let's let's just cross pollinate these records here, and maybe people will enjoy a little bit of Toto music there, you know. You get more. You get more music. Yeah, yeah. G'day, sir. How you been? How are you, John? Uh, I'm glad we're able to work this out and everything like that. I love your I love your background right there. I see some CDs and I see a I actually see a reel to reel tape recorder back yeah, there. Yeah, that's a TAC. I've got a Studer. Uh, yeah, an 885, A805, I think. It's a very famous Studer. Uh, yeah, but, right. But no one wants it because it weighs 100 pounds and it's. I know. No. Anyway, um, so let's start with let's start with Christmas. I've asked every you know I don't do it in June because people look at me like they want to kill me. But but right. what was Christmas like for you? The holidays like for you when you were a kid, and, and what are you expecting this year? Uh, Christmas was great when I was a kid. We had a tree and we had presents under the tree, and uh, I'll never forget the year I was. I think I was uh, eight years old when I got a a, a Schwinn bicycle. And that was just a, with the a handlebars, butterfly handlebars. And that was just the biggest deal to me in the world. I couldn't believe it, you know. With That's the banana knew, seat? The banana seat? Uh, Did you have the banana, banana seat. And, uh, <laughs> and that's when I knew Santa existed because I couldn't figure out how that bike got in there, that our living room. You know what I mean? For uh, So I knew there was a Santa Claus. And uh, uh, this year, I'm uh, hoping that I get an e-bike from Santa, you know. Me and my wife were looking to get go e-biking, you know. So uh, uh, hopefully Santa will be able to fit that down the chimney. Really nice to finally talk to you. Me too. Okay, um, let's start there. Let's start there. Diamond Girl was the first hit record I ever played on. Uh, I was about 18 at the time. And uh, Louis Shelton had been playing uh, guitar, the producer, great producer, on my dad's TV show, which is the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. They were the pit band. And so I was I used to play with these pros down there, sit in with the professionals. And Louis Shelton heard me playing some of the uh, England Dan, John Ford Coley he'd produced, and Seals and Crofts heard me playing some of their songs and asked me if I wanted to do a session because uh, one of my other heroes, Joe Sample, got sick and he couldn't make the date. So I filled in for him. And it was Diamond Girl. And that was my first hit record. So, and the rest of the album is fantastic. But that was just like uh, hearing an angel sing. You know what I mean? Coming down with these songs from nowhere, dash harmonizing with them. It was fantastic. All the A players. You know, the, there was this thing a program director told me, a first program director who actually sold me that studer there for $1,000. I know it's worth a lot more. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he said, how does a song make you feel? He says, yeah, it's got the hooks and all that stuff. But he says, well, now and then we've got, and this is in 83 when I got into radio. He says, how does it make you feel? And I remember looking, thinking of Seals and Crofts and, and the fact that a lot of their music, I know the Baha'i faith probably had a lot to do with it. They were really right. plugged into sure. something. But yeah. but there's something to uh, how something kind of plugs you in, how it makes you feel beyond the hooks and everything else. It does. I think when music, especially that, when you get that intricate, I was just telling someone that we, uh, I learned uh, my production uh, protocol came out so much from Steely Dan and from Seals and Crofts. Those are the two bands that we learned. 
to get out the, 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 the microscope and to make sure technically everything was really good and that all the music will fit on top of each other. Because there's a lot of production. If you listen to us or Seals and Crofts and even Steely, Steely takes an immense amount of time with their, uh, they did when I was working with them at least, uh, with their albums. And uh, so we learned to really nitpick and to, this is before machines and before uh, you could tune the vocals and do all this stuff that everybody did would have to really knuckle down and uh, pay attention. And, and like I said, try and make the best music that you possibly can. So Seals of the Cross, that's what that, that album. And that, a rea you know. reaction to Jimmy passing? Uh, a bittersweet feeling. Uh, it's, I, I, I'm glad Jimmy is, is uh, making music upstairs with all the other great musicians, including my father. And, uh, but I'll miss him dearly. Forgotten Toys is the brand new EP from David Page. It's a long time coming. He spent his whole life working with a whole bunch of musicians. We'll have links to the Toto website where you can pick it up in the description. Make sure you like our video. Keep in mind the entire first interview is online right now. We'll have a link to it. And keep looking back for links to the brand new interview in its entirety. We'll be having that up in the next couple of weeks. And there'll be a link in the description. Subscribe to our channel, share our videos, and comment. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself.